Amylase, Wikipedia article audio. An amylase is an enzyme that catalyses the hydrolysis of starch into sugars. Amylase is present in the saliva of humans and some other mammals, where it begins the chemical process of digestion. Foods that contain large amounts of starch but little sugar, such as rice and potatoes, may acquire a slightly sweet taste as they are chewed because amylase degrades some of their starch into sugar. The pancreas and salivary gland make amylase to hydrolyze dietary starch into disaccharides and trisaccharides which are converted by other enzymes to glucose to supply the body with energy. Plants and some bacteria also produce amylase. As diastase, amylase was the first enzyme to be discovered and isolated. Specific amylase proteins are designated by different Greek letters. All amylases are glycoside hydrolases and act on alpha-1-4 glycosidic bonds. The alpha amylases are calcium metalloenzymes. By acting at random locations along the starch chain, alpha amylase breaks down long-chain carbohydrates, ultimately yielding maltotriose and maltose from amylose or maltose glucose and limit dextrin from amylopectin. Because it can act anywhere on the substrate, alpha amylase tends to be faster acting than beta amylase. In animals, it is a major digestive enzyme, and its optimum pH is 6.77.0. Classification Alpha amylase In human physiology, both the salivary and pancreatic amylases are alpha amylases. The alpha amylases form is also found in plants, fungi, and bacteria. Another form of amylase, beta amylase is also synthesized by bacteria, fungi, and plants. Working from the non-reducing end, Beta amylase catalyzes the hydrolysis of the second alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond, cleaving off two glucose units at a time. During the ripening of fruit, beta amylase breaks starch into maltose, resulting in the sweet flavor of ripe fruit. Both alpha amylase and beta amylase are present in seeds. Beta amylase is present in an inactive form prior to germination, whereas alpha amylase and proteases appear once germination has begun. Many microbes also produce amylase to degrade extracellular starches. Animal tissues do not contain beta amylase, although it may be present in microorganisms contained within the digestive tract. The optimum pH for beta amylase is 4.05.0. Gamma amylase will cleave alpha glycosidic linkages, as well as the last glycosidic linkages at the non reducing end of amylose and amylopectin, yielding glucose. The gamma amylase has most acidic optimum pH of all amylases because it is most active around pH 3. Beta amylase Alpha and beta amylases are important in brewing beer and liquor made from sugars derived from starch. In fermentation, yeast ingest sugars and excrete alcohol. In beer and some liquors, the sugars present at the beginning of fermentation have been produced by mashing grains or other starch sources. In traditional beer brewing, Malted barley is mixed with hot water to create a mash, which is held at a given temperature to allow the amylases in the malted grain to convert the barley's starch into sugars. Different temperatures optimize the activity of alpha or beta amylase, resulting in different mixtures of fermentable and unfermentable sugars. In selecting mash temperature and grain-to-water ratio, a brewer can change the alcohol content, mouthfeel, aroma, and flavor of the finished beer. In some historic methods of producing alcoholic beverages, the conversion of starch to sugar starts with the brewer chewing grain to mix it with saliva. 
This practice is no longer widely in use. Gamma amylase Amylases are used in bread making and to break down complex sugars, such as starch, into simple sugars. Yeast then feeds on these simple sugars and converts it into the waste products of alcohol and CO2. This imparts flavor and causes the bread to rise. While amylases are found naturally in yeast cells, it takes time for the yeast to produce enough of these enzymes to break down significant quantities of starch in the bread. This is the reason for long fermented doughs such as sourdough. Modern bread making techniques have included amylases into bread improver, thereby making the process faster and more practical for commercial use. Alpha amylase is often listed as an ingredient on commercially packaged milled flour. Bakers with long exposure to amylase enriched flour are at risk of developing dermatitis or asthma. In molecular biology, the presence of amylase can serve as an additional method of selecting for successful integration of a reporter construct in addition to antibiotic resistance. As reporter genes are flanked by homologous regions of the structural gene for amylase, successful integration will disrupt the amylase gene and prevent starch degradation, which is easily detectable through iodine staining. Uses Amylase also has medical applications in the use of pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy. It is one of the components in Salpura to help in the breakdown of carbohydrates into simple sugars. Fermentation An inhibitor of alpha amylase, called phaseolamin, has been tested as a potential diet aid. Flour Additive when used as a food additive, amylase has E number E1100, and may be derived from swine pancreas or mold mushroom. Bacillary amylase is also used in clothing and dishwasher detergents to dissolve starches from fabrics and dishes. Molecular Biology Factory workers who work with amylase for any of the above uses are at increased risk of occupational asthma. 5 to 9% of bakers have a positive skin test, and a fourth to a third of bakers with breathing problems are hypersensitive to amylase. Blood serum amylase may be measured for purposes of medical diagnosis. A higher than normal concentration may reflect one of several medical conditions including acute inflammation of the pancreas, but also perforated peptic ulcer, torsion of an ovarian cyst, strangulation, ileus, mesenteric ischemia, macroamylasemia, and mumps. Amylase may be measured in other body fluids, including urine and peritoneal fluid. A January 2007 study from Washington University in St. Lewis suggests that saliva tests of the enzyme could be used to indicate sleep deficits, as the enzyme increases its activity in correlation with the length of time a subject has been deprived of sleep. In 1831, Erhard Friedrich Liuch described the hydrolysis of starch by saliva, due to the presence of an enzyme in saliva, tylen, an amylase. The modern history of enzymes began in 1833, when French chemists Anselm Payen and Jean-François Persaz isolated an amylase complex from germinating barley and named it diastase. In 1862, Alexander Jakulowitsk Danilowski separated pancreatic amylase from trypsin. Carbohydrates are a food source rich in energy. Following the agricultural revolution 12,000 years ago, human diet began to rely more on plant and animal domestication in place of hunting and gathering. This shift also symbolizes the beginning of a diet composed of 49% carbohydrates as opposed to the previous 35% observed in Paleolithic humans. As such, 
starch became a staple of human diet. Large polymers such as starch are partially hydrolyzed in the mouth by the enzyme amylase before being cleaved further into sugars. Therefore, humans that contained amylase in the saliva would benefit from increased ability to digest starch more efficiently and in higher quantities. Despite the obvious benefits, early humans did not possess salivary amylase, a trend that is also seen in evolutionary relatives of the human, such as chimpanzees and bonobos, who possess either one or no copies of the gene responsible for producing salivary amylase. This gene, AMY1, originated in the pancreas. A duplication event of the AMY1 gene allowed it to evolve salivary specificity, leading to the production of amylase in the saliva. In addition the same event occurred independently in rodents, emphasizing the importance of salivary amylase in organisms that consume relatively large amounts of starch. Medical Uses However, not all humans possess the same number of copies of the AMY1 gene. Populations known to rely more on carbohydrates have a higher number of AMY1 copies than human populations that, by comparison, consume little starch. The number of AMY1 gene copies in humans can range from six copies in agricultural groups such as European American and Japanese to only two to three copies in hunter-gatherer societies such as the Bayaka, Datug, and Yakuts. The correlation that exists between starch consumption and number of AMY1 copies specific to population suggest that more AMY1 copies in high starch populations has been selected for by natural selection and considered the favorable phenotype for those individuals. Therefore, it is most likely that the benefit of an individual possessing more copies of AMY1 in a high starch population increases fitness and produces healthier, fitter offspring. This fact is especially apparent when comparing geographically close populations with different eating habits that possess a different number of copies of the AMY1 gene. Such is the case for some Asian populations that have been shown to possess few AMY1 copies relative to some agricultural population in Asia. This offers strong evidence that natural selection has acted on this gene as opposed to the possibility that the gene has spread through genetic drift. Other Uses Hyperamylasemia History Human evolution